Hi there. If you look at this robot, this robot has learned to turn this valve uh, by itself. Now, by itself isn't really correct, but it has learned it in a semi-supervised way, with only 10 human inputs along the entire learning trajectory. So only 10 times was there a true reward for this reinforcement learning procedure, and the rest is unsupervised discovery of this skill. And the paper we're going to look at today, and the technique uh, by which this was achieved is dynamical distance learning for semi-supervised and unsupervised skill discovery by Christian Hartikainen, Xinyang Geng, Thomas Harnoya, and Sergei Levine. Uh, so this is a technique for reinforcement learning. So they claim reinforcement learning requires manual specification of a reward function to learn a task, right? And they say, while in principle, this reward function only needs to specify the task goal, in practice, reinforcement learning can be very time consuming or even infeasible unless the reward function is shaped so as to provide a smooth gradient towards a successful outcome. So what does this mean? Let's look at it. So if we want the robot here to turn the valve to the right, right? Ideally, you simply want to say, uh, so the robot is here. This is the start state, right? Ideally, you just want to say, I want this, right? I want the the uh, the, the thing to turn uh, to be at the right. So this is good. All of this, I don't I don't want any of that, right? And um, and 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 the reinforcement learning algorithm. I mean, this is enough. This is a reward function, right? All of this is zero, and this is one, right? Uh, this is a reward function, and in theory, if you apply any sort of reinforcement learning algorithm with any sort of guarantee, this should get you there. But of course, we all know that it's not that easy, right? There is basically an exploration um, bottleneck where your robot has these three digits and uh, lots of joints to move around, and the 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 probability that by itself it discovered that it needs to do this here and get this reward is very, very slim. So what you want to do is in your reward function that you're providing to the robot, you would want to say, okay, so this here, I see the um, the blue thing is a bit more turned, so I'm maybe going to give this a 0 0.1, and then the, here it's a bit more turned, so maybe this is 0 0.2, and this I really like, 0 0.3, Here's 0 0.6 maybe because it's even more, right? And then one at the end, right? So this is what they would call a, a smooth gradient in the reward function where it's kind of the reward function ramps up until the goal is reached. But oftentimes this isn't really possible because if you already knew how exactly to do the task which <laughs> then you could you can only shape the reward function truly if you know how to perform the task in the first hand and then why exactly do you do reinforcement learning um, except for as an academic exercise so the the issue this paper has is is clear right Th what they want to say is like let's 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 assume that your reward function is actually pretty bad can we provide artificially a way that this um, discovery of these of these uh, what they call of these new skills is facilitated as if the reward function had some sort of a gradient so that's the the outset let's actually go back to the to this for a second and um, they have these mazes as as a, as a kind of a an example. So if you look at these mazes, um, what we want to keep in mind is, um, let's actually draw this over here. So let's say you have one of these mazes, right? And always there is a, there is a, a start state. So you're here, and then there is a goal state, right? Let's say over here. And the task is you, 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 you can move up, down, left, right, and the task is to reach the goal, right? But if the reward function is simply that if you reach the goal, you get a reward of one and otherwise you get a reward of zero, then all the agent can do is kind of explore um, around, right? Until it reaches the goal. Now, if you do random exploration, like a lot of uh, 
a lot of reinforcement learning algorithms for for example q learning or policy gradient they all have some sort of a just of a random exploration element where they if they don't if they don't absent of what they of the when they know what to do they just kind of uh, boogle around like up 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 right left right left down right up oh that doesn't work okay down down uh left down so they it's sort of and then up again right and then they just kind of wonk around um so this this method <laughs> takes issue with that and it says okay while the agent is doing its thing trying to reach the goal right what we can do is we can learn a distance function between states. Now, we'll reduce the problem for now and just say the task is always that the goal state is reached in the shortest amount of steps, right? So let's say the, the agent does something, right? It goes here, 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 and then here. Right, it, that's that's one rollout of the policy, and then it crashes into a wall. Okay, that's bad. Um, so it gets a negative reward, right? But in addition to that, we can we can learn. So it has visited all of these states here in between, right? Um, these are intermediate states. This paper wants us now to to learn a distance function between the states. So this distance function, let's call it d it learns how far two states are away so it'll you can you can tell it okay this state here let's call that state a and this state here state b how far are those away now this is not super well defined yet but you want to say how far are they away for this agent here so the agent has maybe policy pi like that's what it used to create this trajectory under policy pi how far away are states A and B? And how far away is simply going to be the amount of steps that it takes the agent to go from A to B. So in this case, that would be two, right? So the, the and you can do this between any two states, right? This and this, this and this. The right here here these all of these states you can also start from this state right uh, let's do it in a different color and do every so the 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 this distance function d can actually has a pretty tight reward signal like a pretty wealth of information that it can learn these things from right that so the policy pi in this case can't learn much because it just got a reward of zero or something um because it didn't reach the goal but the distance function has a very very big reward or a big reward it has a very dense reward signal where it can learn distances between two states right now let's say we've explored a bunch right a bunch we've had many trajectories some here like to here and then here sometimes we even reach the goal right so so sometimes we actually reach the goal so we learn the to the distances between all of the the states now if we had a perfect distance function let's assume we have a perfect distance function our task now becomes very very simple so let's assume that's uh so let's assume i'm here where the green agent is and i have these i can either go up or down and let's go that's the up let's say that's x and the down is y right which one should i choose now without even uh, asking my policy per se um what i can do is i can ask hey a uh, distance function um so I can ask the distance function two different things. So first, let's do it like this. Distance function, what do you think of the distance between x to the goal? And what do you think of the distance from y to the goal? And the distance function, if it's learned uh, correctly, it will tell you the distance of x to the goal is whatever, maybe you need eight steps, the distance of y to the goal, is 10 steps right so definitely you would go with x right um, so if you had a good distance function then you could solve the task uh, fairly fairly easily 
Now this by itself isn't super interesting, you will quickly notice that if you are able to learn such a good distance function, especially with the goal state here, then you might as well learn a good policy because that means you've reached the goal a fair number of times, right? So the, the kind of information theoretic um, signal of D versus the signal on pi, if you just want to reach the same goal, to me, it seems the same. This this paper, it tries to talk this up, I feel, but um, to me, if you are in the situation where you have a fixed goal and that's it, then this doesn't seem too interesting or uh, too beneficial um, with it, compared to, um, let's say, just learning a value function, right? Like you would do in, in A3C or something. Uh, the difference between this and a value function. So if 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 the number of steps is actually your reward, so your negative reward, you wanna reach the goal in the shortest amount of time, um, then learning a value function is the same. The difference is for a value function, the value function simply takes a state S, right? And the policy pi. While the distance function takes a state S and a goal state for the policy pi. The goal state for the value function is implicit, right? So it implicitly has the goal state because you assume that the goal is always the same. With the distance function, you can technically uh, change your goal. And this is where it becomes interesting. So let's say you've explored, but you haven't quite reached the goal yet, right? But we said, okay, most of these RL algorithms, they have some sort of some notion of random, oops, of random exploration, right? In order to to reach the goal, what if you went from here to here and to here and to here, and you learned the distances fairly well for the trajectories that you can do, but you just haven't been able to got, go any further? What you can say is you can go to your replay buffer, right? Your memory of everything you've done, and you can ask which of these states has the furthest distance from my starting state? And the answer will be, okay, this state here has the furthest distance. So now what you can do is you can make this your goal, right? You can just try to reach that state, right? And once you reach the state, you can explore from that state, right? Because this is the farthest away uh, from your original starting state. That probably means that you know, if you, that's kind of the frontier of what you know. So if you explore from here, you can go even further, noticeably, because it is the farthest that you know. So it, it might turn out that from here you can only go back, right? So that's a possibility, but probably you could go even further, right? So then you go further and you might reach this state here, right? And again, you ask your, your replay buffer and it tells you this state here is the farthest so far. So you take this as your new goal. And now you're just trying to reach that and explore from here. This is extremely similar to uh, an algorithm like Go Explore that I already made a video about, where it remembers what it did. And then it, it all, will always travel to the furthest states it has seen so far. And then from there, try to go farther, right? So this this, if you, if you can learn a good distance function here, that will help you in exploring the space. And eventually, of course, you think you might actually reach this goal state. So you might go far enough into in this maze, you might explore it enough, uh, such that you you stumble over the goal state by itself. All right. So this is this is sort of uh, the, the goal. This can be used in a number of different ways. Now, instead of always going for the furthest, what they did in the robot is they just let the algorithm explore, right? You explore, 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 if this is like a state tree. And then at some point, it, it asked the human, which one is closest to what you want? And then the human says, this one. And then they say, ah, okay, cool. So this is now the new goal, right? So we'll try to reach this as much as possible and then explore from here, right? So this, in the case of the robot, the robot simply just like does some things. <laughs> it 
<laughs> explores in, in the unsupervised manner. And then at some point you ask the human, which of these things that the robot has done you like the most. And then that becomes the new intermediate goal state and the algorithm explores from there, right? So that's the, the main gist and how you can use this. Now, the entire learning thing is actually pretty simple. So what they propose is simply to, um, to learn the distance function. They did put it pretty formal here. They say, okay, if you have two states that were visited after one another in an episode, then you can define the distance function as the sum um, from i to j if, if the, they were at visited at time steps i and j respectively. Uh, this is a discounted cost function across this, but ultimately they consider problems where it's shortest path problems. So the cost function simply becomes how many steps does it take you to reach, um, to reach the goal. So the cost function, so this becomes, this, this becomes the identity, I guess you can, you can set it to, to one and this you can also set to one. So this simply becomes uh, J minus I. How many steps does it take you to reach state, state in time step J from the state you visited in time step I? And then they simply train a, po a neural network or I'm not even sure if it's a neural network, but you train a bunch of a parameterized function uh, that m learns to map the distance between these states to how many steps it took you from one to the other, right? And you do this simply by having a, a by regressing. So mean squared uh, regression, mean squared loss re um, regression, simple as that. And that's how you learn the distance function. And then you can use the distance function in the ways we discussed. So either to improve your shortest path policy um, by giving it, by providing it. So what you wanna do is you wanna provide the distance function as the negative reward, right? So they say they, they, they provide the distance function as a negative reward for this, or you can do this in an unsupervised fashion um, where you always propose the furthest away goals, or you can do this in the semi-supervised fashion. So they have a bunch of um, things that they did. Here, they have a bunch of videos of uh, things that they trained. Uh, this is from the human, sorry, from the semi-supervised, where the humans were simply selecting the hoppers that went furthest to the right. And you can see over time, this um, hops to the right with very, very sparse input only. So this is semi-supervised, right? And then it goes to the right. And it also has an unsupervised um, video where you simply let it perform. And it un in unsupervised fashion, it tries to discover states that are as far away as possible from its initial states. And you can see it actually learns to move to the right and to the left uh, because these are um, these reach states that are very far from its original state, right? So that's it's pretty cool that it turns out that the, the unsupervised uh, method will discover such states. All right, so what to make of this? This, if you recognize this already, it's very plausible because I had seen this, some sort of this idea in many, many uh, papers before. So, and they make some connections in their related work. So if you know, for example, universal value functions um, sorry, universal value uh, estimation, universal value functions, and so on, where um, basically it's also an unsupervised way where you always just, you select two states. You say this and this. Agent, now try, try to go from here to here, right? Just try that. And um, so it, it is, and then you'd select two new states. So you basically teach your agent to go between two states um, that you choose at random. And it's supposed to, in an unsupervised fashion, learn something about the environment. Very similar to what we have here, right? Also a bunch of other, a bunch of other things, like just 
pure value functions are also pretty similar, uh, I think, to this. Go explore, there's a big connection to go explore. So this has been around in one way or the other, but possibly not in this specific formulation. And what I think is cool applied to this specific um, semi-supervised uh, task. So if I had to formulate a, a criticism to this method, I would guess that it probably doesn't work when, let's say, the branching factor of the task is super high. You, you see here, you can you can only really turn the valve in one way or another. Of course, the the digits and the, the joints are are um, they have they have uh, degrees of freedom. But if if you think if the branching factor is super high, right? So from a from a given state here. Um, you can go in many, many, many different ways. And then from each of those, you can go in many, many different ways, right? Then the, the notion of something being far away, right? You go to this thing and you say, what's the farthest away, all right? Is, is almost meaningless because you have so much not explored, right? So if you have, if you are three steps deep here, right, it will always tell you, well, this state here is the farthest away, but you haven't explored these, you know, 15 directions um, here, right? So it might be that uh, you actually miss, so that you, you go, so here's the goal and here's the start and you, go a long way but you miss this obvious shortcut here because you always want to go along the longest uh, path around so it seems like th there is there there are probably environments where this works well right but there right but but uh, it, it appears that if if either the branching factor is super high or if there are maybe these these kind of loops in the game um loops between states, uh, non-obvious combinatorial things, um, it might be uh, somewhat even counterproductive sometimes. Um, not, not sure about that, but it seems to be very specific environments where this would work. All right, so this was my commentary. I invite you to sorry, read the paper, check it out, and bye-bye. Uh,